title of this video is The Gods in Buddhism. But if we want to be very precise, we should replace the word in in this title by according to. Let's me, let me explain. In ancient Buddhism, which is the monastic type of Buddhism, there is simply no place for mythology, nor is there place for gods who would be genuinely Buddhist. Buddha was an agnostic, but he probably felt that eliminating Hindu gods and goddesses was an impossible task. Instead, he attempted to turn them into noble friends, Kalyana Mitra for the monks. On the other hand, Buddhism cannot be co considered as atheist. On the contrary, when a disciple of Buddha met a real atheist, the king, a king called Payasi, he converted him to Buddhism but inviting Payasi to pronounce the stock formula of rejoining the Sangha, the Buddhist community. This text is, I take refu refuge in the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha. Already in the first Buddhist scripture, the god uh, the gods of, Hindu, of Hinduism are present, particularly Brahma, Indra, and Svor's name, Saka, Yama, and some groups like the Yakas, all of them, of all whom, serve Buddha and his disciples and honor them as the holders of the truth. In the collection of the lengthy sermons, Diganikaya, an the eleventh sermon puts on stage the bhikkhu, namely the monk Kevada, who yearns to get answer to his doubt concerning human existence. He pays a visit to several gods, but unable to give, who, unable to give them the right answers, urge him to question Buddha about uh, the matter. And as expected, this later supplies, supplies Kivada with the right answers. Buddhist art, particularly when it started to be iconic, it is to depict the Buddha as a human shape, has allotted an important role to the deities in the key event of his life. One of the best known relief relief of Indo-Greek origin shows us the virginal brief birth of Gautama. He leaves the body of his mother Maya and is welcomed by both Brahma and Indra Saka. Brahma is holding a swaddling cloth and behind him the god Saka stands out. The crowds of the gods seems to enjoy attending the important events of Buddha's life. For instance, when he gives away his scepter to Maitreyi, the Buddha of the future, before descending on earth for his last existence. Or when abandoning his wife and his young son Rahula, he leaves his palace during the night in order to enter his dream existence as a monk. Uh, after his uh, awakening, Bodhi, the gods led by Brahma, his noble friends, invite him to preach the Four Noble Truth to everybody in the world. First Noble Truth. Now this is the Noble Truth of pain. Birth is pain, old age is pain. Now, second uh, truth. Now this is the Noble Truth of the cause of the pain, that craving which, which leads to rebirth. Third noble uh, truth. Now this is the noble truth of the cessation of pain, non-attachment. Fourth, fourth noble truth. Now this is the noble truth of the way that leads to the cessation of pain. This is the noble eightfold path, namely right views, right intention, right speech, right livelihood, right concentration. Later on, Buddha is visited by the god Saka, who gives him back some stolen fibers. So it is paradoxically uh, a, a simple man, Buddha, who absolves a god from his sin. 
Contact between the gods and Buddha and his bhikkhus generally takes place during ecstasies, samadhi, of the, of the later, either at dawn or during the siesta after the single mean, meal of the day at noon. But to, per, to per, perceive this, you have to be endowed with the Dibachaku, the div, divine eye. The Hindu gods adopted by Buddhism live in sundry paradises, that too, pile on top of each other from the most material one to the most ethereal ones. The lowest of this realm is the one presided over by the four great kings standing at, at the four point of the compass. Next, we move on to the realm of the 30 free Vedic gods and among them so those already mentioned, Saka, etc. Then to the realm of Yama and to that of the satisfied God, Tushita. It is in this later realm that Buddha awaited his last rebirth. The highest levels are occupied, are occupied by purely spiritual beings who pass their existence in meditation. Therefore, therefore the highest Datu, called place of non-consciousness and non Unconsciousness is the place and the name of the purest Samadhi. At the end of the cosmic period, when the universal five fire engulfed the whole world, it even burns the lowest realms and their celestial inhabitants must take refuge in the higher floors, for instance, in the Abhasvara, the luminous realms. In the, on the other hand, the Buddhist gods are not immortal. To be sure, they spend an enormous span of time in paradises, several cosmic periods, Kalpa, 432,000 years. But finally, they will return to earth to become Buddhist monks and to reach Nirvana. And their descent from their realm is announced by a number of clues, they start sweating, they refate, etc. Deprived of omniscience, omnis as in the above mentioned story of Kivada, and of immortality, the gods of Buddhism have lost omnipotence as well. To Saka, who offers him his palace, the famous most monk, Mogalana, replies by destroying it with a kick. Let us now describe some Buddhist gods that derive uh, from the B Vedic scriptures. The best known is probably Saka, San Sanskrit chakra, the powerful, called Indra in the Veda. He has under his control the god of the point of the compass, who must watch the human world and inform in, inform in about his, its state. In his turn, Shaka Indra pays allegiance to Buddha, to whom he supplies help and assistance. He is a listener of the Tathagata and finds his pleasure with the perfect monk, Arant, even if the huge power brought about by their penances endanger his own. Finally, he contributes to the conversion of Sri Lanka to Buddhism. The Vedic god Varuna, who is considered among others as an aquatic genius, is rarely present in the Buddhist scripture. He is sometimes called Yaka, devil, and in a story contained in the Payasi Sutta, he appears as a monstrous character who is endowed with detailed link with water and who destroyed a whole caravan. Yama is, not, is known as the god of death, but the emphasis on the punishment of misdeed is linked with the firm belief in the rebirth and Yama is simply the onlooker at the operation of karma or retributive re, 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 act. 
Oddly mentioned is mentioned in the Buddhist canon are the Vedic deities Mitra, Shiva and Vishnu. Later in the history of Buddhism, when the Sangha were open to laymen as well to monks, new characters emerged who are somewhat similar to gods. They are called bodhisattvas, creatures of awakening, and they live in several paradises where they welcome human beings that escape the misfortune of the early life. However, however, these bodhisattvas are rather deified arats than genuine gods. Now, after Japan and China, these observations on Buddhism have more or less kept us in Asia, particularly in the eastern part of Asia, because that is where the varieties of Buddhism are practiced practiced most, as you will remember from the introduction to this course. In terms of chronology, we, you may have noticed that we moved rather freely between ancient and modern time. But in the last uh, two units of this first week, we will move back further in time and take a huge leap westwards. Marianne Michel we shows us uh, something of what the ancient Egyptians believed about their gods. Mm -hmm.